and I'm glad to say and uh, declare that we have become fifth largest democracy in the world as we enter this process. Um, <clears throat> Uh, 336 uh, total National Assembly seats are up for grab. Uh, we have 266 National Assembly seats uh, that would be contested. There, there are a lot of uh, details um, uh, about uh, our, this exercise. Um, <clears throat> I think it's... Uh, 128.6 million voters will be exercising their uh, right to vote, uh, four provincial assemblies and the National Assembly. So we want, wanted to welcome you all and assure you that we have uh, very good arrangements to ensure the security and integrity of the process, providing uh, security to uh, polling stations in a three-tier system, uh, with police taking the main responsibility uh, in the first parameter, including uh, the polling stations, with civil armed forces on the outer cordon uh, parameter, and uh, Pakistan Army uh, as the main quick reaction force on the outside perimeter. So we have uh, um, uh, uh, more than uh, uh, ample resources available to ensure uh, peaceful, uh, free and fair elections on Thursday, February 8. Uh, there have been um, speculations in the past uh, about the possibility of elections uh, at times about uh, severity of the weather, sometimes about security, uh, sometimes about even um, Iran, uh, Pakistan uh, skirmish that uh, we experienced uh, last month. But we have been consistent. Caretaker government has been consistent from the day one. Uh, and uh, as the chief spokesperson of the government of Pakistan, I have held this position consistently that elections will be held on time as announced by the Election Commission of Pakistan. So we welcome you all and uh, we open this uh, uh, <clears throat> session for question. We would have to wind up before 1 p.m. because there are other important media activities planned that you are already aware of. So we'll have one question for uh, each uh, organization. And uh, we'll just go back and forth. Madam uh, Amreen Jan has uh, the names, and we'll go. Uh, Mr. Nick, would you like, like to ask uh, any question from the minister about the elections? Sure. Um. So what's your, you know, assuming that there are any problems on election day, um, how quickly would these military units be able to be, uh, how quickly could you deploy them? You deploy them. Probably less than the number of fingers on your hand in terms of minutes. Next is uh, the national Mr. media. Um, Mr. Farhan Bukhari. Thank you, madam. Uh, so, let me talk, first of all, let me thank you for being accessible, very accessible, as you come to the end of your tenure. It's been uh, very good having you on the uh, information minister, unlike some of your predecessors. Uh, my question is that in less than an hour, this uh, matter of former Prime Minister Imran Khan's marital status, the validity of that will be decided. Court is going to give out its verdict. This and other uh, developments, other events around Imran Khan and PTI have reinforced the impression that this is a highly one-sided uh, uh, election with the uh, establishment. Uh, holding charge. What do you? What is your response to these allegations and the environment in which you're heading towards these elections for the fifth largest democracy, as you say? Thank you, sir. We are a free country, and uh, they have every right to criticize anything, including uh, the caretaker government and the courts. Media is free. 
they have been uh, venting their uh, dissent and uh, they have every right to criticize uh, any judgment of the court um, as far as the verdicts of courts are concerned uh, the caretaker government has no comment uh, about those verdicts uh, we do not control the courts uh, we represent the caretaker government of Pakistan that's uh, put in place uh, legally and constitutionally. Mr. Afzal Raza, would you like to ask any question? How many, can you please repeat the digits, the how many voters would to cast their votes for this year election? 128.6 million voters across and Pakistan. How uh, do you have any figures, uh, Mr. To how many males and uh, how many females? Yes, uh, we do and, have uh, figures. Let me try. It. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's the percentage. Okay. 69.2 uh, million voters uh, are male, male voters, and 53.87 are, uh, no, that's the percentage, I'm sorry, 59.3 million female voters. Uh, but if you look at the previous statistics, this gap has uh, been bridged to a great extent. It, it has narrowed. Uh, so more women uh, voters have been included. Two million, Two million uh, new uh, 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 women voters have been added. So this gap is narrowing down, especially in uh, Punjab and Sindh. Uh, less in Balochistan, but more. Mr. Nazi? Okay, just a few days before the elections and terrorist attacks increase in Balochistan and KPK. So, what do you think uh, is the reason for the increase in these attacks, and what do, what would you say about it? Thank you. Well, uh, law and order and uh, terrorism is not new to this country. We have been experiencing this uh, for uh, over a decade. Uh, especially uh, around uh, 2005 and six and seven, uh, the 2008 elections were held um, in a very uh, security uh, threatened environment when uh, there, was, there was a lot of uh, terrorist activities. So that also continued in 2013, um, especially after August 15, 2021, when uh, Taliban took over uh, Kabul, uh, sadly, uh, this uh, terrorist uh, uh, spike has uh, surged. Uh, and uh, there, there are um, operational uh, collaborations between different uh, uh, terrorist groups. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of the recent UN report uh, how the terrorist groups of different hues and shades, including Al-Qaeda and TTP, uh, they are uh, uh, active in uh, Afghanistan and uh, they use Afghanistan as the safe sanctuary. So we are uh, uh, experiencing uh, that uh, threat, uh, but uh, our uh, security forces are battle hardened and we will ensure that elections will be held in a peaceful environment. Ms. Friedrich, do you have a question? Yeah. Yes. Could you please tell us? Could you please tell us a little bit about the international uh, election observers? From which countries? From which bodies are they coming? Uh, uh, do you have the figures of the foreign observers? 
I have. Me I'll get back to you. Let me just pull it out and take another question in the meantime. Ms. Luzen, do you have a, have a question? No? Okay. So now we come to the last question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I missed yeah. you. Yes. Um, Mr. Matar. Uh, I'd like to ask about the economic situation. Um, Pakistan and especially the caretaker government has signed so many MOUs with some countries, especially with Kuwait recently. And uh, there was some news about that there will be a re reconstructuring of the FBR and maybe there will be change of uh, the currency, uh, the local uh, currency. My question is about the economy. Uh, whether this election, uh, in a way or another, the result of this election will affect Pakistan's relation with, for example, the Gulf countries, will improve the uh, economic situation. Uh, what is the fate of those MOU signed during the caretaker government, especially with Kuwait? Um, the economic initiatives uh, uh, that were uh, that took place uh, during caretaker government were uh, uh, taken in the background of uh, SIFC, Special uh, Investment Facilitation Council, and that was approved by the outgoing parliament. So it has the cover of the parliament. And the same political forces would uh, return uh, in the parliament with whatever ratio people decide uh, in terms of uh, their uh, priority. But the same political forces that endorsed these economic initiatives are about to return to parliament in few days. So I have full faith uh, that these economic initiatives uh, will continue. And our uh, relationship uh, with uh, our uh, partners uh, in uh, Gulf and elsewhere, including People's Republic of China, those relations will deepen. And Pakistan, that has been stabilized economically in the last uh, five months, uh, there is enough to you know, build uh, on those uh, initiatives. You can get back to her. About Ms. the and currency. I'm sorry? I was, there was a part of my question about the reconstruction of the FBI and changing of the currency. Yeah, um, uh, even yesterday, uh, SIFC approved uh, and our cabinet also approved uh, uh, economic reforms uh, related to tax policy and FBR. But uh, those uh, changes will take place. Uh, after we uh, make some amendments in uh, FBR and Customs Act, and that's the domain of the parliament. So we will carry uh, and forward those uh, recommendations uh, and the work that we have conducted so far uh, to the next parliament. And we are hopeful that these will be uh, um, approved because uh, they are in the greater interest of Pakistan and its uh, economic uh, future. Um, and that will uh, also uh, stabilize uh, rupee dollar uh, relationship. As you have seen, uh, the day caretaker government uh, took oath of office on August 17 uh, last year, um, the uh, official uh, interbank rate was 296 rupees for a single dollar. But in open market, uh, we couldn't uh, find a dollar in 350 rupees or even 400. And, there were speculations that we will just go to 500 rupees for a dollar. But because of the administrative measures and some uh, efficient uh, working of uh, the uh, governance system, uh, we have stabilized uh, the economy and uh, also the open rate and the curb rate on uh, uh, the dollar. Ms. Friedrich, you can uh, repeat the question and the minister will answer now. <laughs> Uh, foreign you, observers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, s uh, 92 international observers from international organizations like Commonwealth, EU, 
and embassies of uh, bilateral uh, uh, countries, uh, they have been uh, issued uh, visa as observers, and they include uh, countries like Russian Federation, Japan, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Netherlands, Malaysia, Hungary, Sweden, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan Germany, and uh, Kyrgyz Republic. The last question? Ms. Yes. Uh, Ms. Gary, would yes. you like to ask Please. something? Yes. Thank you. You addressed the Imran Khan uh, court cases, but I just wanted to ask, um, the PTI have alleged that there's been a campaign of intimidation, of violence, of abduction against them during the course of this election. I wanted to know what your response to that is. Uh, we find these allegations baseless and absurd. Yes, people have been arrested, but those arrests were made, uh, some related to May 9 incidents, and some uh, involved in other criminal cases. So this allegation uh, has no basis. However, uh, they are free to express their dissent and allegations, even if they are baseless. Uh, the media carries them. Uh, at the same time, they have other legal options available, including the courts, including the highest courts of the land. Thank you. Thank you. ग्रांड वजीर इतलात मुर्तजा सोलंकी प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस कर रहे थे उन्होंने कहा कि इंतबी अमल में चार रोज बाकी रह गए हैं इंतबात के हवाले से इंतजाम मुकम्मल कर लिए गए जबकि सिक्योरिटी के हवाले से उन्होंने कहा कि सिक्योरिटी के बेहतरीन इंतजाम किए गए हैं और इसे तीन हिस्सों में तकसीम किया गया पहले हिस्से में पुलिस है जबकि दूसरे में रेंजर्स और तीसरे में एफ सी इसके साथ साथ उन्होंने कहा कि मुल्क में जमहूरीत का तसलसल जारी रहेगा पाकिस्तान दुनिया की पाँचवीं बड़ी जमहूरीत है पाकिस्तान में अदालतें आज़ाद हैं पाकिस्तान में सबको अपनी राय देने का हक हासिल है मुर्तजा सोलंगी प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस कर रहे थे सवाल जवाब का भी सेशन किया गया उन्होंने कहा कि इंतबात के हवाले से इंतजाम मुकम्मल कर लिए गए हैं